Now in this lesson we want to talk about showing space in our painting, especially with working from photographs when a lot of time there isn't much space or doesn't seem to be. There's not a big deal of difference in the darks in here and the darks back in here. Same thing with the grass. It's the same color here, almost a little bit stronger back in here. So sometimes it's the camera just not picking up any value change in the background. All the darks like back in here seem about the same as the dark here. And the intensity of the color is pretty much the same from the grass to the background. The tree works fairly well. We got stronger yellow greens here and a little more muted. Not quite as, as intense back in the background. So to some degree that works, but there's not much difference in the shadow area in the background trees and the foreground trees. So we want to be able to show that, that distance. Now the composition works well. Not much to change. There might be a little bit. I like the fence in the foreground coming in here and winding this way towards the barn and then to the trees and then with the fence posts on back to that tree and kind of winds around again. So that works real well. There's really no composition to change other than maybe here the trees run off the canvas, maybe in the background I won't have the trees run off as much. Kind of make them a little smaller so it shows more depth by size as well. Smaller tree in the background bigger tree in the foreground. But color wise I want to do some more things. First thing in the uh, foreground, again the green and the grass is just too much the same. And I do want it to be a yellow green. In other words my decision from the color wheel, if I'm picking one color from the color wheel, will be a yellow green. But I'm going to make it a bit more intense. So a little less white in the mixture. Enough to make it the right value but not enough to make it look kind of chalky. This looks kind of like the color's been bleached out of it and that's what we want to change here. So I want to get bright enough color and that's a bit too dark because it's getting close to the value of the trees. And the value of the grass, the lightness of the grass has to be lighter than the trees because the trees are upright and the grass is a flat plane. And um, in order to show Again, depth on the painting, you have to have value change between those planes. And if you don't understand the planes, um, I go over them quite a bit in the, in the different demos. Because once you understand that, uh, values start to make more sense. So I've got a couple of different greens. Uh, one a little darker, a little lighter. And that makes it a lot stronger. Now color-wise, I can vary it. And this has nothing to do with creating depth, it's just breaking up the color. I can go to more yellow-orange. The thing about color is, if the value is right, the color's going to work no matter what it is. Whether I have purple grass or if I have the value and the temperature right, then it's going to read well. So now going to the background grass, again I'll go to a yellow-green. But when I do this on the computer, it's, it's the equivalent of adding the complement to the color as I go more towards gray. So I'm going to get more muted. In other words, this would be white, ultramarine blue, a little bit of cad yellow, and then maybe either some violet or some lizard crimson, which is a red. Red and green kind of mute each other. It doesn't have to be red. And I get kind of a middle intensity right in here. And I can go back again and hit the stronger intensity. By the time you move up front, you get a more variation of color. Not so much back in the background, but in front you do. So now here are the strongest color kind of a medium or middle ground color. Not quite as intense and then the background is a lot more intense. Some of that has to do with white. I've got a bit more white added to the green back in here. Less white here. Some white to get the right value but white kind of kills color so that's one thing you can do is add white to your color to knock it down as long as you don't lose the value by adding too much or too little light. And then same thing in here. This grass is a bit darker a little taller so more so more uh, vertical so that variation of grass getting lighter a little more muted in the background really helps push things back in the distance now the other thing that helps looking at the trees I want a darker or I want a shadow back in here that's a little more muted and what I want to do is this background tree looks really complicated there's just a lot of little darks and lights so the first thing that I do is I lighten the darks is create a bigger simpler shadow pattern. And I know the light's coming in from the left. And that's a lot more muted. If I put a spot of that here, you can see it's gray 
compared to that stronger green. And then the dark will not be as dark as the shadows in here, or the, the dark dark. So I have two darks here, an overall dark that suggests the big shadow pattern, and then some dark accents that give the deeper darks where you're looking down in the middle of the tree. Then I might go with a bluer green. In other words, less cad yellow, a little more ultramarine blue, because I want a, a big jump in the difference between these two trees. Now that shoots back there a lot more, and just to create more of a shape, more variation in the background that separates things a little bit more. I'm going to get a little bit of a stronger blue. I can separate that a bit more. And if there's anything past that tree that shows up, it's going to be very blue. In other words, in the distance back in there. So if there was, um, like this was a separate tree back in here. In other words, if I want to create another layer now, or hillside. So I've got foreground tree, middle ground tree, background trees or hillside than the sky. So I've set up another layer of uh, distance and it, it creates more depth back in there. And I don't have to have this. It's not in the photograph, but if you think outside the photograph, you think about what maybe the painting needs to make it work better, you can come up with things like this. I always look for areas in the painting where I can push maybe a bit more depth back in there. So go back to the beginning. Not a lot of depth, kind of flat here because it's the same value is here. But then with the changes, I got instant depth in there. So intensity of color in the foreground, more muted color in the background, a little warmer in the foreground. I got a lot more yellows in here and oranges. Here I've got more blue than yellow. And then another layer of depth in the background. Kind of push that back. So look for those things that you can push. Even if the photograph looks good, you want to practice the idea of creating more depth in your painting. And the more you can kind of practice that, look for it. Just like composition, you kind of develop an eye for a good composition by practicing changing the composition to improve it. Same thing with creating depth in the painting. Look for areas that you can, you can push a little bit more.